Oh wow, that was one of the most expensive computer programming bugs in history. This is what happened. Let me take you back to the 4th of June 1996 to Kurao in the French Guinea. The Ariane 5, the flagship rocket of the European Space Agency ESA, was being launched as Flight 501, carrying a payload of four satellites. The payload is not important for this disaster as the failure occurred due to a software failure. 37 seconds after liftoff, BOOM! Disaster! The rocket suffered a severe malfunction causing the loss of the entire vehicle. The rocket deviated too much from its intended path, causing too much stress on it, resulting in total failure. The predecessor to the Ariane 5 rocket, the Ariane 4, had been flown successfully for 20 years without failure. This had led the ESA to be overconfident that their software platform would be successful even with the changes in the design of the Ariane 5 compared to the Ariane 4. This is quite common in a lot of software projects where you get a new version of the hardware and you kind of think that the old version of the software working on the new hardware is going to work. And this is exactly what happened to the ESA. The software failure that led to the disaster was a variable overflow in the internal reference system SRI caused by a 64-bit floating point variable being truncated down to 16 bits signed integer. Now, any programmer is going to tell you that any code that uses variable types, truncating floating points into integers is a sure sign that a disaster is waiting to happen. In this case, truncating a very large floating point, a 64-bit floating point into a 16-bit signed integer, definitely this was a disaster waiting to happen. To make matters worse, the programming platform that the space agency used was ADA. Now ADA is really common in space technology because it's, it's a very stable programming language, but it doesn't have exception handling. This means that when a variable is truncated improperly, only a debugging message will appear. There is no exception being thrown and there is no flow control in alternate flows. So the program continues running with the corrupted value and that's exactly what happened in this scenario. The backup to the SRI was running the same identical software. So the same identical problem occurred in the backup as well. During testing, this issue was not observed because when the value of the floating point is small, the truncation would actually work. Since the integer is 16 bits, only a large enough value of the 64-bit floating point will actually cause a truncation error when the floating point is converted to an integer. This means that during testing, they were always using small values for the floating points. At 38 seconds, as the rocket was heading into space, the flight computer consumed the invalid reading and attempted to correct the rocket's trajectory. This is what caused the rocket to tilt and finally explode. Errors like this are certainly not a product of just one failure of software development. It's quite easy to test for these kind of errors. What occurred was that the team that wrote the Ariane 4 software, they did review the code and they did identify that there were variables that were prone to truncation and variables that could create this kind of an error. What happened was that the hardware that they were using, the Ariane 4, would never produce a value high enough to cause this error. And so they decided hey, it was safe. You know, you could truncate this, this floating point to an integer because it always worked. But when the Ariane 5 came about, the hardware was upgraded so that it was, was a better hardware. It could produce values far beyond the safe range. And what the team didn't do was go back and change the code so that it would adapt to the Ariane 5 hardware. This would still not fully contribute to the total failure of the rocket, as the software will have backup procedures. However, this particular module, the SRI, would be shut down when there is failure, and the backup would activate. Both modules use the identical same software. So what happened was that when the primary SRI was shut down, the backup SRI also had the invalid values because it was truncating the 64-bit floating point in the identical same way. 
the software team didn't focus on their algorithms being buggy enough that both primary and backup will malfunction. They were focusing on hardware problems where what would happen if the hardware malfunctioned. So in this kind of a failure, both systems malfunctioned causing all readings of the sensor to be invalid. Overall, the factors that contributed to this failure was a bit more cultural than actually a line of code. It's pretty easy to say, oh, if they truncated the variable in the correct way or if they de dealt with the overflows, it would have worked. But the reality is that it was the culture of the ESA. They did not value that simplicity, testing or even designing for software failures was important enough. They were trying to make the rockets work on the perspective that if the hardware was reliable, then the software would just work. These are not the cultural values that you must have in a software project, especially when you're dealing with a rocket, because software failures can cause the entire cascade of failures that would occur, causing the entire rocket to explode. The Ariane 5 project did, however, continue and make a lot of successful launches. The Ariane 5 will eventually be replaced by the Ariane 6, and there's a lot of launches being planned for the Ariane 6. Hopefully, in that case, History doesn't repeat itself and Ariane 6 is tested hardware and software so that this kind of an error will never occur again. Hope you enjoyed this brief overview of history of one of the worst computer programming disasters. I'll try to make a few more videos about computer programming disasters. It's a bit of a break from making windy bug videos which I usually do. But it's kind of nice to get a perspective of how bad things can be if people don't fix their bugs or find their bugs. So I hope you enjoyed this brief history. I'll put more information in the description below as, as well as links to the actual video of the explosion and the ESA website itself. There is a very elaborate report on this disaster on their website, so do check it out. Um, Leave a comment below if you've heard of this before. Leave a comment below on what you think of this disaster. Let me know what you think, what they could have done to try to prevent this disaster. Do let me know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, you're, you're missing out on some of this amazing content. So do go ahead and subscribe. Give me a like if you like the video. Give me a thumbs down if you don't like the video. That lets me know I need to improve. But definitely hit that bell icon to be notified of more videos and tell me what you think about this disaster or videos in general. I just like to hear from you. Anyway, I'm High Voice signing out.